Hello, welcome to Forest Learn. In this video, we'll be discussing an example of electromagnetic induction known as the Faraday disk dynamo. This is named after Michael Faraday, one of the pioneers of electromagnetic induction. The Faraday disk dynamo is an example of an electrical generator, a device that can generate electricity via induction. Generators are a massive part of the induction topic, and the Faraday disk dynamo quite often turns up in exam questions to do with electromagnetic braking systems of vehicles. So it's well worth your time to understand the physics behind the Faraday disk dynamo. This video is part of a series or playlist of videos on induction. In our intro to induction, I explained how I've broken the topic down into three different types of induction to help you organize your understanding of this challenging topic. The previous two videos dealt with the first type, cutting field lines where we discussed Faraday's and Lenz's laws when a wire cuts across magnetic field lines. The Faraday disk dynamo is an example of this first type, and the discussion assumes you have some familiarity with Faraday's and Lenz's laws. To get the most out of this video, I strongly encourage you to watch the previous two videos first, especially if you're new to induction. Also, I recommend you take your own notes as you follow the video. Once you've watched the video, why not try to explain what you've learnt to a friend or a family member as a test to see how well you understood the material. The Faraday disk dynamo consists of a conducting disk, which is shown in pink, which is placed in a uniform magnetic field. The disk lies in a horizontal plane and the magnetic field lines, which are shown in black, are directed vertically up. It may appear as though there aren't any magnetic field lines poking the disk in the southern and eastern regions of the disk, but I haven't drawn those field lines in on purpose so as not to overcomplicate the diagrams later on in the video. So you'll just have to imagine that there really are magnetic field lines poking through this disk uniformly all over the disk. The rod shown going through the center of the disk is also a conductor, known as a shaft. The rotation of the shaft rotates the disk clockwise at a constant angular speed as shown. If we connect an ammeter to the rim of the disc and the shaft via some wires, the ammeter will show a non-zero reading. In other words, the ammeter detects the flow of an electric current. Can you explain what's going on here? Why is there a current flowing and in what direction would it be flowing? Please pause the video and have a think about this. When you're done, unpause the video and we'll discuss what's going on. Recall that at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the Faraday disk dynamo is an example of the type of induction that I've called cutting field lines. Hopefully you remember that cutting field lines refers to when, for example, a wire moves up, cutting across horizontal magnetic field lines, resulting in an induced EMF and current. However, it's not obvious that we can interpret the Faraday disk dynamo as an example of cutting field lines. The reason we can is because of the following. Consider a thin sector in the disc, as shown. As the disc rotates, the sector will move around like this. And that means the sector is cutting across magnetic field lines as it rotates, meaning an induced EMF should develop across the ends of the sector. Before we go on, make sure you are happy that the motion of the sector through the magnetic field is similar to that of a wire being moved up through a magnetic field. If you're having difficulty seeing the similarity, you can try the following. You can use the fingers on your left hand to represent magnetic field lines and take a pen in your right hand to represent either the wire or the sector. As you move the pen relative to your left fingers, you should find that in both cases, for the wire and the sector, the pen cuts across your fingers. In other words, both these situations are examples of a conductor cutting across magnetic field lines. The next thing we have to figure out is the direction of the induced EMF that develops, which will let us work out the direction of the induced current that flows. Consider a free electron in the sector, as shown. If the disk rotates clockwise, then the electron is moving towards us. From Fleming's left-hand rule, we can therefore see that the electron would experience a force to the right. Remember that if the electron moves towards us, the direction of current 
which is the direction we should point our second finger in, will be away from us. As a result of the magnetic force to the right, free electrons in the sector will accumulate on the rim of the disc, making it negatively charged, while the centre will become positively charged, as electrons move away from it. This means that an induced current will flow from positive to negative through the ammeter, as shown. Remember, we're talking about conventional current here. The electron current or flow of electrons would be in the opposite direction. As I mentioned earlier, the Faraday disk dynamo is an example of a generator. It's an example of a DC or direct current generator. You'll meet examples of AC or alternating current generators in future videos that we'll make. Now here's a couple of questions for you to ponder over. What, if anything, would change to the induced EMF if A, the magnetic flux density, B, were to decrease, B, the angular speed, omega, were to increase, C, the radius of the disk, capital R, were to decrease, and d, the disk were to rotate anti-clockwise, but at the same angular speed as originally. Please pause the video and have a think about these yourself. Remember to try and justify your answers. When you're done, unpause the video and we'll discuss the answers. The key to answering these questions is to recall Faraday's law for when a wire at 90 degrees to a uniform magnetic field cuts across the magnetic field lines at 90 degrees. Strictly speaking, this formula can't be directly applied to a scenario, but there's enough overlap between the Faraday disk dynamo and a wire cutting across magnetic field lines for us to still use Faraday's law and reason with it to answer these questions. For part A, from Faraday's law, we see that induced EMF is proportional to the magnetic flux density, B. So as you might expect, if B decreases, the induced EMF will also decrease. For part B, if the angular speed increases, that means the linear speed of all the points on the disk will increase. So looking at Faraday's law, we see that E, the induced EMF, or rather epsilon, is proportional to V, which is really a linear speed. So if the angular speed increases, we'd expect the induced EMF to therefore increase as well. For part C, the radius of the disk is the length of the sector we've been considering, so it naturally makes sense to identify it with L, the length of the wire in Faraday's law. As you might expect, if the radius decreases, the induced EMF will decrease as well. However, these two things aren't proportional to each other. It turns out that the induced EMF in the Faraday disk dynamo is given by the following expression, half times omega times b times the square of the radius. It's not too hard to prove this with a bit of integration. If you're curious, you should find the proof with a quick search. You don't need to know this formula for A-level physics. For part D, if the disk rotates in the opposite direction, but with the same angular speed, the only things that will change are the direction of the induced EMF and the direction of the induced current as well. You should be able to see this for yourself using Fleming's left-hand rule the magnitude of the induced EMF and current will be unaffected. If we return to the original scenario, what does Lenz's law have to say about what's going on? Please pause the video and have a think about this. And when you're undone, unpause the video. Recall that Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF is such as to oppose the change that caused it. We've already worked out the direction of the induced EMF and current. Within the sector, the induced current flows from right to left. From Fleming's left-hand rule, we can therefore see that the sector would experience a magnetic force that resists its motion. This is true not just of the sector, but the disk as a whole. So, the direction of the induced EMF is in precisely the right direction to oppose the change that caused it in the first place, which was the clockwise rotation of the disk. This is exactly in accordance with Lenz's law. To keep the disk rotating at a constant angular speed, work needs to be done continually on the shaft to overcome the resistive magnetic force. If you've studied a fair bit of induction already, you might have noticed that in this video we didn't discuss magnetic flux or changes of magnetic flux. As I mentioned near the beginning, the Faraday disk dynamo is an example of a type of induction that has nothing to do with magnetic flux. 
In a previous video, I pointed out that EM induction isn't necessarily always about magnetic flux or changes in it. Part of the challenge of induction is learning to recognize what type of induction a particular scenario falls under. Hopefully, this series or playlist of videos can help you in overcoming this challenge. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the Forest Learn channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you soon.